makes beer for all the local bars and restaurants. And um, so we dropped the beer off, and, and all these bars were paying to have their waste vegetable oil from their fryers hauled away. So we figured we'd take it off their hands for free, they'd be happy, and then we could convert the biodiesel into fuel so we could deliver more beer. It's kind of a happy little cycle. Uh, now I got the uh, one ton uh, delivery truck with diesel and a little uh, 1981 Peugeot turbo diesel, and then a friend of mine runs his Volkswagen Rabbit on the biodiesel right now. 100% in the Volkswagen, the Fujo, and 25% in the truck. Okay. Right now I make the biodiesel in my garage at home, but at the new facility we'll be able to make it right there. So we'll have a bigger setup, uh, a little cleaner, and we'll be able to make it year-round because it'll be a heated space. Right now we kind of suspend the operations in the winter because the garage is too cold for the necessary chemical reactions to make biodiesel. Uh, wash your fuel. There's lots of literature on the internet about it. We used to put unwashed in there and we definitely experienced some issues with the injectors and the glow plugs, which I can only trace the, uh, the residual glycerin and unwashed biodiesel. So, since we started washing, we've had no ill effects whatsoever. So, I would definitely recommend uh, washing the fuel. We have we're built we're breaking ground on a new place, and our biggest uh, green thing there is we're going to have if we pull it off the the largest solar thermal array in Montana, and we'll use the sun's energy to generate hot water and uh, you know obviously the brewing process you need hot water to mash which is the first step of the brewing process you need hot water to wash kegs and tanks and so the solar array we're putting in uh, according to my engineer will be able to raise a thousand gallons a day in the summer uh, you know at 180 degrees so it'll be a pretty substantial reduction in natural gas for, for heating needs there that's the brew house side there that's where we mash the grains and the Boil the beer. Um, I guess we recycle the spent mash. We have uh, yeah. a rancher feed it to his cows, and then I also run some pigs uh, about two, uh, two miles north of here. So we feed mash and pigs all day. Seeing all that stuff, but I just you're such a good guy. <laughs> I didn't know you were the guy behind the okay. behind the. Kind of where the process starts. We have a grain room here, and then uh, outside the building, we call that one pipe is a silo. We actually get our silo filled um, from Great Falls, and it's all Montana-grown barley. Uh huh. And that's the bulk of the, the grain we use. So we like to support local farmers, and I think you know, you're minimizing your impact by uh, transportation costs. We'll have to come to Great Falls and Red Lodge. And Montana is also one of the biggest barley-growing states in the country, so that's, that's a, it's a great way to add value to Montana ag products. I think this is a great way to go. Um, you know. I don't think it can solve the nation's fuel wo woes. There's only so much used cooking oil out there, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Yes.